Welcome back, this is John Roberts, and you are watching Access Placement Game 1, Episode 2. While you're watching, I'm going to ask you to please like, share, and subscribe, and please comment about what you like about these games, these videos. As always, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy. USA Round 3, 2 transports, 2 tanks, 3 infantry, 1 artillery, no combat. You move this force here, and it's quite a decent number of units that could be uh, transported over to France. Moved all of that into Eastern Canada. Two fighters in Egypt makes this situation a little more sticky. The bomber, fighter, another fighter to Africa. And he moved these units up here, I guess, to watch over uh, these two sea zones. Make sure I don't leave any transports unattended. Uh, just to keep me honest, I suppose. Doesn't have any transports, so it's not very threatening. My fleet can handle this, but perhaps I'll buy a, a submarine or something. Two new transports, and the units. And then Soviet Union, round four. One fighter, two infantry, one artillery. Walked into West Russia. And walked into Soviet Far East. Moved one unit into Vilagda. And mobilized these units. So 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 7, 8, 9, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So I ran it through a calculator. If I were to assault Caucasus, I would have about an 80% chance. And when I use a calculator, an 80% chance I consider to actually be a 75% chance. A 25% chance for him to hold out here is just too high. The reason for that is the first round of combat has to be at least average. And if it's not, if, if the first round goes in the defender's favor, then a 75% becomes a 45% or a 35% or something like that. Uh, so for that reasons, I am not going to assault Caucasus. Though there are some players who, uh, who would take the risk. I know plenty of players who would take the risk. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. So let's see what we could do here. Right now we have a capacity of nine. So nine infantry leaves 17. I don't necessarily need to put 10 out here. He doesn't have any transports in range. What he does have is the potential of 12, 13, 14, about 15 units can hit France. So I have to make the decision, do I want to hold France, st stack up France, and allow these infantry to roll at two, or do I want to have more infantry to counterattack with uh, more hit points? I'm thinking I'm going to try to stack this up and just make it difficult for him to take France. Of course, this means I'm not going to be able to move as many units as I'd like east. I also have ended up kind of split up here. I really should have these two stacks uh, together rather than this kind of pincer move. So we're going to have to see how we can correct that. Probably stack up Belarusia. So that being said, let's repair some Germany. Let's see what that looks like. Two more infantry. Okay, 12 infantry and one artillery. I think we're gonna go for Vlogda with just one infantry. Two fighters. And West Russia, make it a more sure thing. This bomber I put here in France to watch over the Atlantic. Uh, he hasn't left me any open targets. Good for him, good for him. 
here in Africa, I think I'm just going to reinforce this for now. Um, I really need these infantry to put into France. So we just take a little look around. May the dice gods be with us. Okay, two successful trades. So now 16, 17, 18, 19. So 8 and 9, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Can these make so 25 against 19? That sounds good. These fighters can't make it. Karelia is still safe. Eight infantry in Belarus. From Belarus, I can decide if I need them here or here. I really want to concentrate on getting my forces in one or the others, north or south. Right, he can't get Karelia, right? I'm not missing anything. He can't pull some kind of weird can opener or something. No, he cannot. The United Kingdom has one tank here. That's not going to help them much. Okay, now France. 12, 13, 14. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. We'll do sixteen. Send two infantry and an artillery to Poland. One more infantry in Libya. 14, 15, 24, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, that looks good. Double, triple check. Artillery in Germany. Always want to have something in Germany to help make a trade, if, if need be. Fill them up. Fill them up. Let's see what the UK have in store for us. Okay, Japan, round four. Let's take a look at UK, round four. Three infantry, one tank, one cruiser, one transport, and one fighter. Another successful bombing raid. This time, he didn't wipe me out, though. Took Morocco. Not much movement. Another fighter in India. He's starting to stack up the fighters. And two infantry here. Um, I think I made a bit of a miscalculation, possibly. I think he has a 65% chance of taking France with these uh, American units here. Should have put two more infantry in there. 
Uh, I read it as he has a 35% chance, which was actually me kind of pushing the issue, but uh, that is moot now because I miscounted. So now my bomber is in danger. Really, for a defense like this, I should have a fighter here with a stack of infantry and aircraft. But we'll have to see what what happens, what the outcome of this is. But this is Japan, round four. That's for Germany, round five. So I need 11 units. What does 11 infantry look like? With five remaining. I actually want an anti-aircraft. I want an anti-aircraft and we'll get a tank. I don't typically buy anti-aircraft guns. They're not very efficient, but the one thing is they are fodder and they fire at the fighters. So if I have two anti-aircraft and he was to attack me with this stack of fighters, I would get six shots, which means it's very likely I would shoot down one, possibly even two. So I think that's worth it. I think that's worth uh, spending an extra IPC rather than getting an artillery. Okay, let's see. Looks good. Move all this infantry into here. We can use this bomber for support. Favorable. If this doesn't go well, we'll have to skedaddle. Freeland. Freeland. I'm not ready to start putting stacks here. i put two infantry here. Just so he has to commit a little bit more. In future turns, I hope to put more here. But I don't want to put my entire army here to be decimated. If he turned around on the Japanese, it would take pressure off the Germans, obviously, making it easier to advance. But I don't think I'm prepared to lose too many units. Maybe a third unit. Maybe a third unit. Just get him thinking. Make him divert some of his units. But still keep uh, some units behind in reserve. Okay. Only one battle, may the dice gods be with us. So that worked out all right. Can land the bomber in Manchuria. Put all these units in Sichuan, except the tank. It's tanks good right there. Can hit India or Kazakh or Xinjiang for that matter as well. I am going to take the anti-aircraft gun and leave one unit behind. I, I'm going to ignore this. He can't really do much to me with this right now. We'll keep an eye on it though. But we double and triple check. We can see all the little circles. They're all units that we do not want to move. Everything else has been moved. That should be good. Tank in Manchuria. I always put my tanks out in Manchuria because they can move too. I'd rather have the uh, infantry and artillery coming out of Japan where they get transported over to uh, Yunnan. Any aircraft artillery. And the infantry. Okay. Let's see what USA has in store for us.
five. Let's take a look at what the Allies did. USA round four. One transport, one artillery, two tanks, one infantry, and one fighter. And they attempted France. So like I said, I calculated that he had a 65% chance. Higher odds than I wanted to leave this player. But that being said, this is not an attack I would have done. 65% is not very good. When the calculator says 65%, you're basically counting on having an average first round of combat. If you're slightly below average and your opponent is slightly higher than average on that first round of combat, it can sway the whole battle, which is why 65% actually feels like 35% sometimes. And that's what happened here. Um, I had slightly higher than expected rolls, and he had slightly lower than expected rolls, and this is the outcome. So we keep the bomber at the expense of the anti-aircraft, that's what they were there for. Uh, he loaded up Canada again. He has far more units than he's capable of uh, transporting, which means he's not being as efficient as he can. This could be, some of these units could be a fighter or a bomber or something. He only has the capability of transporting four of these units this turn. Put a fighter in Caucasus, another fighter in Egypt. We're still going to have to hold out here. We just don't have enough to take this. Let him keep stacking up here. Let him keep putting U.S. fighters here. Uh, U.S. fighters don't have a lot of range from here. They're not really doing much. They're just sitting here trying to stop the Germans from taking this one territory. Destroyer to Sea Zone 13. The two transports. He put a transport out in San Francisco. Let's see what he's up to with that. An artillery in San Francisco. And then the rest he put in Washington. Oh, one in Brazil. I forgot he has this uh, IC in Brazil. Very interesting. I actually don't think I've ever seen this. Or have never been involved in a game where I saw this. Okay, so the Germans... Right now they have a capacity of 10. Only able to put out 5 in Germany. Let's see with 10 infantry. Leave 16. If we buy up 4 capacity, we buy. That looks good. So now, let's see about West Russia. We use this infantry. One of you. One of you. Four fighters. That should do it for West Russia. Now, one of the reasons I put this bomber here is because he left his transports open to attack. So that's two transports that the United States will no longer have. Make sure you keep an eye on bomber range. Not doing much down here. May the dice gods be with us. Okay. We could have had one more unit left, but it is what it is. Put everything here in Ukraine. Everything in Ukraine. I calculated this. I have over a 95% chance of holding this. Bomber goes back to France. He doesn't really have much options for attacking France. We'll say he can get in here with seven. So we'll put two more infantry in there. Reinforce Libya again. I don't like having to take one or two infantry every round into Libya, but this has become a uh, pressure point and it's causing him to stack up more useful units here as well. I'll definitely trade a German infantry for a US fighter. So let's just do a count. 19, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35 is what he can come in here with. 
We got 11, 21, 22, 32, 41. It's pretty good defense. He doesn't really have much capability of softening up either. A couple of fighters, maybe an infantry or a tank. Keep him next to uh, next to his buddies. Okay, double, triple check. One thing that concerns me is Karelia. I'm pretty sure he has odds on Karelia. Let's see what he does with that. Okay. Let's see what the United Kingdom has in store for us. Okay, Japan round five. Let's see what the United Kingdom did. Three tanks, four infantry. Two IPCs of damage. Took free land in Algeria. Battle conducted in Norway. Took Northwest Europe. So viewers, you'll have to excuse me. I have a companion with me. He might be a little noisy, but I only have a couple hours left to record this video. And I have my son Archer with me. He's got a toy. Maybe he'll stay quiet. Maybe not. We'll find out. So non-combat move. Bomber. Sub. Cruiser. He took advantage of the fact that I moved all my fighters. Now he could split up a little. I could risk the bomber. Hmm. We'll think about that. Two tanks to Caucasus. Three more tanks in India. And... Four to the United Kingdom. Okay, so Japan has eight infantry, has four transports, so we need another eight infantry plus three is 11. Let's see what that looks like. Leaves me with eight IPCs. Let's trade up. We'll trade up again. And two artillery. Seven infantry, two artillery, two tanks. Looks good. Okay, let's see if we can finally get him out of here. We use the bomber for support there. He's got 17 units he can attack here with. One, two, three, 18. But eight of them are fighters and three of them are tanks. So I would want at least 25 units, I think. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I don't really think it's possible to hold Burma. Since he hasn't attacked this, I'm going to add more units to this. Just kind of suffocate him. Also, he's got 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So let's see here. If we got 5, 6, 7, 8... 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We don't have enough to take India either. Okay. That's it for combat. May the dice gods be with us. Okay, that worked. Land the bomber here. Let's bring a couple more infantry. Keep a front. The tank there. Stick a couple more infantry there. I know I'm trying to build up like two forces here. And I should either go for one or the other. But he's stacking up these fighters. And that's starts to become problematic. He has a lot of firepower here. Also, he's not really doing much about this, which allows me to kind of creep up on him. So, continue the convoy. Actually, that's right. I got this for a reason. So we didn't need 11 land units. Another minor little mistake. Those little mistakes add up. Those little mistakes add up. 
It's the first place you can improve your game. It's not make mistakes, even the smallest mistakes. You know what? I'm going to put an infantry and an artillery up here as well. Oh, almost forgot these two. Okay, that looks good. Mobilize units. Tanks out of Manchuria. Don't want infantry. Everything else in Japan. Okay. Let's see what the Allies have in store for us. Say goodbye, Archer. Okay, Germany, round six. Let's see what the United States did. Two transports, three artillery, four infantry. No combat move for the United States. Uh, they loaded up Canada. They moved a fighter into French Equatorial Africa. That's interesting. Wasn't the fighter here? No. Came from Brazil. Got a couple of units up in Alaska and this transport here. So we'll definitely have to keep an eye on that. See what he's up to. The two transport, the two infantry we saw. Six transports over to C-Zone 10. That means he can bring all 11 units over into France. We have to make a decision. Do we want to Hold France with infantry that defend it too, or do we want to pull back and try to outnumber them on a counter strike? Hmm. Definitely something to think about. Alright, put a transport out of here, put a transport out of here, put some units there. And the Soviet Union purchased five infantry, uh, took West Russia, lost an infantry. Move the fighters into Caucasus and mobilized his infantry. So I'm looking at this, I have about an 85% chance at Caucasus, according to the calculator. Let's see what we're going to buy. I want a fighter. May lose a fighter. Let's see. Nine infantry, two artillery. That looks good. Okay, so let's take back Northwest Europe using these units in Germany. Three infantry and one artillery should take care of that handedly. Put everything into Caucasus. Unlikely. So we will have to use this bomber. I was hoping not to have to use the bomber. I was hoping to have that bomber for those transports that he just left sitting out there. But I really want to get Caucasus. Let's see if it's worth doing this. I didn't run this through a calculator. But let's just see how that looks. And we'll take West Russia as well. Three on one should be good. Unlikely in Egypt. Let's rethink that. We can bring an infantry to help out here with the battleship support. And then we can turn around and take Algeria. This little standoff here in Libya has started to benefit the Allies more than the Axis, so we're going to turn around. I'm still stuck on if I should send that bomber to get those transports. Most people would probably say I'm crazy for not sending that bomber, but it's already only favorable. I really want to get that. I really think that's a game-ending battle. So may the Dice God be with us.
Okay, so that went well. The only issue now is that I don't have any land units here in Central Eastern Europe. So I don't have anything to reinforce with. And now we have to think about France. Do we want to stack up France or do we want to pull back from France? Well, I was just looking at this and I just noticed casualty uh, decision. I lost the bomber. So I had it set to just uh, automatically lose from my defense profile, and I didn't notice that I lost the bomber. So there's another mistake on me. So what to do about France here? You can come in with 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, about 21 combined USA and UK. So I would want like 18, but I'm looking at Europe being so barren because I can't assume that I'm going to that I'm going to be able to get Moscow. So I want to send some units east. Hmm. Let's pull out of France. Let's pull out of France, send some units east. Let's see about Moscow. He can put another five units, another five infantry. I don't know if he could hold that. He can land these fighters, but even with that, I don't know if he can hold out between the uh, what the Germans and the Japanese can uh, bring on Moscow. But I still can't assume that I can take it. Bring the tank up to Karelia, make that more secure. I think that's pretty safe though. Let's just put let's just put it all into Poland. Get a good healthy stack going east. Okay, that looks good. Fighter in Berlin. One artillery, one artillery up in Karelia, and the infantry, wherever we can put them. Let's see what United Kingdom has in store for us. Okay, so my opponent forfeit. Let's take a look at the board. Kind of unfortunate. Um, I would have kept playing for another round or two he could have possibly landed these fighters and these fighters yeah he could have waited to see what happened but he forfeit I don't blame him he felt like it was uh, not a winnable situation see we still don't have a ranking so this is a bronze player king good game Perhaps we'll match up again in the future. Okay, so that's it for this video. Please like, share, subscribe. Do all the things you can do to support this channel. Please join us for our next video, where I'll be beginning a custom game with a tabletop buddy of mine. So that should be interesting. And as always, thank you for watching.